What up gamers, Fence here here, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. So last time we began the side story stuff with Trust Part 1 and 2, and in this video we'll be continuing with Understanding Part 1 and 2. But yeah, let's go do it man. Begin the side story. I think this is where we go and meet Yuri for the first time. I'm excited man. The club meeting is suddenly interrupted by the sound of the door causing Monica and Sayori to turn their heads. The door opens halfway, then stops. A face peeks inside. A face that seems familiar. Hey, there she is. And yeah, man, the music, once again, like it, it is kind of like throwing me off just because I'm used to the music of this game, especially when I've been hearing it like so much like back in the day. So yeah, I'm assuming this is like new music, right? I've like never heard this. Later all, just quiet. Sayori's eyes widen, recognizing the girl. She is very conspicuous, conspicuous. <laughs> uh, uh, mouths to Monica. But did I say that right? Hold on, I feel like I said that so bad. <laughs> oh, the music. Oh. Yeah, I recognize the the beat. It's... Dang, this one feels really chill, like a chill version of that. The other one felt like the original felt more like upbeat. She very conspi conspicuously mouths to Monica. There we go, I said it right. I think that was it. It's her. It's the girl. It's true. The girl standing in the doorway is none other than the girl Sayori had come across reading alone in a classroom. Thanks to Monica leaving a flyer on her desk, it seems she's found her way to the club. Are you here for the literature club, by any chance? Um, am I in the wrong place? No, you're not. This is the literature club. Please come inside. The girl fully steps in the door, but continues standing against the wall, avoiding eye contact. Then she, she's like super shy here. Uh, Sayori continues to fail containing her excitement. <laughs> It's happening, oh my gosh. Thank you so much for coming. Sorry, it's a little empty. Um, I'm Monica, and this is Sayori, and we run the literature club, even though it was just us so far, but... What's your name, by the way? I'd like to join your club. Already? Wait, really? Are you sure? I... I mean, I should be good enough. <laughs> Everyone is welcome here. You don't have to be good enough. Oh. Um, do you want to have a seat? We'd love to get to know you. The girl nods, sliding over to a nearby desk and gently sitting down. So, what's your name? Yuri. I'm Siori, and this is Monica. Siori, I already... Nice to meet you. Um, do you like fantasy? Uh, like books? Uh... Yuri looks at Monica. Fantasy is cool. Yes, have you heard of Annabelle Dupont? Ah, I can't say I have. Oh, well, she's my favorite author. I'm on her fifth book and it's just... Yuri grins and presses her knuckles against her cheeks in joy. Dang, she must be really enjoying just maybe finally being able to share... Like, I guess her passion. I'm guessing... I'm guessing no, there's like no one else for her to talk to about this or, you know, maybe because I'm guessing she doesn't really have that much friends. I think one of the issues like back in the, like her issues in the original story was that she was kind of like alone, I think. But I'm guessing that might be it. You can borrow my books. I wouldn't mind. You're really in for an incredible experience. Um... Monica stammers, caught completely off guard by Yuri taking control of the conversation. And yeah, you know what? That's also like very surprising too. Like Yuri, I remember she took a man kind of like in the second act in the original game. That's because, you know, she was like really like, I guess, in love with the main character. But here, like she's also kind of like really confident. Like she's not that, I guess that shy and stuff. <laughs> at least at first she was kind of shy, but right now it's like, She's really taking over. Uh, Monica stammers, caught completely off guard by Yuri taking control of the conversation. 
She glances sideways at Sayori, silently asking for help. I'd love to. It sounds like you're really into them, so they must be great. I'm so happy I found this club. Oh, I'm stupid. I left all my other books in my locker. I should have brought them. Yuri quickly stands up. I'll be right back. I'll go get them for you. Uh, you probably need to bring one for now. Sayori nervously says that, noting to herself the, the considerable heftiness of the book that Yuri set down on her desk. Chew, okay. I'll go get the first one then. Yuri exits the club room in a flash, leaving Monica and Sayori silently exchanging glances. Oh my gosh, I wasn't prepared for this. How do I handle someone so intense? I have, like, no experience with fantasy, except maybe stuff that I read when I was a kid, but that's probably like a joke compared to what she's into. I'm sure it'll be fine. In fact, I think it's neat that we have different people who are into different kinds of literature. It'll be fun to learn from each other. Yeah, I don't mean to- I don't disagree, but... What if this is her only interest? Doesn't it kind of seem like that? Monica, don't you, th don't you think you should be more optimistic? We have a new club member. There shouldn't be room for anything but being happy. I'm excited to get to know her more, aren't you? Yeah, I guess you're right. Sorry for being so hasty. I just got really anxious all of a sudden. It's because you're afraid of not being able to take, take the lead. <laughs> what the heck? It's kind of scary how you can point things out like that, Sayori. I just like learning what makes people happy or sad. Yeah, speaking of sad, like we we ended off in a sad note in a way in the previous video. So like this is a, definitely a like this is like right after that. <laughs> so everything has been like like from like really sad to really happy now. Yeah. Hey, you know what? You'd probably just be great at helping Yuri feel comfortable here. Maybe you could take a break from helping me with the administrative stuff and just focus on spending time with her. Yay, that's what exactly what I want to do. Besides, Sayori lowers her voice. I'm probably going to need all the time I can get. She taps her fingers, her finger against the dauntingly chunky book Yuri left sitting on the desk. Right afterwards, the door opens to reveal Yuri's return. I'm back. Her breath is slightly heavy, which combined with her short time gone, indicates she may have ran at least part of the way. She makes her way back over to Sayori and sets the, the book down on her desk. Just as Sayori featured, or uh, feared, <laughs> the book Yuri brought for her is just about equal in size to the one already on Yuri's desk. Well, uh, there are probably a few things you should know before getting started on it. There are some things that are more explained in other books that take place in the same universe, so going over those would be good to help you from getting confused at the start. <laughs> Wait, what? Um, so there are some things more explained in other books, same universe. Wow, so like she's into a, like this is this is sounding like some kind of like multiverse stuff maybe, or maybe it sounds like a multiverse but it's in the same universe. Dang. I wonder if that does if that's like a reference to um like to the whole thing going on with the metaverse here. Because I remember, like I said, I've only watched the I guess the one or two game theories that they made, you know, you know, from the game theorists with MatPat. And I think uh, they referenced like her book being like a clue or something. So I'm wondering if this is also something too. Um uh, um, Sayori nervously interjects. Well, I was thinking that maybe today we could just get to know each other a little bit more. You know, I think, like, if we're gonna be reading together, then I would like that. From across the room, Monica smiles and nods to Sayori, while Yuri isn't looking. Oh, okay. Yuri sits down, then looks at her book, then glances around the room, showing no indication that she has anything more to add. So, what made you decide you wanted to join a club? Well, I like reading, so I was immediately interested. I had no idea that someone was starting a literature club, but that's my fault, since I haven't been paying attention to any of the club recruitment advertisements. 
I only found out because she. Yuri glances over to at Monica. Monica! Monica came into my classroom and put the flyer on my desk. Suddenly, Yuri's face darkens and she shakes her head at herself. I was so stupid. I got too nervous and I couldn't even look up. So she just walked it out. It took me several days just to come here because I was afraid that Monica told everyone how inconsiderate I was. But it's, I decided that that was probably irrational. Wait! No, that was totally my fault. I felt so bad about interrupting you that I just, like, walked out. I was actually really hoping that you would come by. Yuri excels in relief. I always seem to interpret things as the worst possible scenario. Well, I was really nervous to come here for some other reasons too. Such as there being too many people. Not that I don't mind, not that I mind that much, but I have a really hard time having to meet large number of new people at once. So it's actually amazing that it's just the two of you. I definitely came at the right time. Ah, that makes me happy. I'm proud of you for working up the courage to come. Yuri smiles warmly to herself. I've never really had the privilege of sharing my interests with others before. It's so hard to find others who are into the same things I am, except online. So I thought the literature club would provide a chance for me to do that. What kind of things, kind of, kinds of other things are you into? Like genres? I don't know, just anything, even if it's not literature. Oh, uh, just things you would think are dumb. Siri pauses, a look of concern on her face. How about, I'll tell you something that I'm into, and then you can tell me about something you're into. I suppose that would be okay. Okay, well, I'm pretty into like, crafty things. Like making cute little collages or decorating things, like cards or jewelry in boxes. My room is always cluttered with random stuff because I keep buying things to make gifts for my, f for my friends. But then I put it off till the last minute. <laughs> so yeah. That's something kind of silly that I'm into. You sound quite creative. Not that much, it's just that you'd be surprised by how much you can do with scissors and glue and stuff. So I have to share something that I'm into now, right? Siri nods. Um, well, I guess I'm into nature. I love nature. Monica, I'm gonna start a nature club. Oh no. <laughs> no, you're only one club at a time. No, you're not. You're stuck with here with, with me now. I am not. Oh, yeah? Well, I hear I appoint you as vice president of the literature club. Oh, snap. There we go. There. Now you're stuck with me. <laughs> hey, don't give me responsibilities. I mean, you wanted that for yourself, right? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Yuri. I interrupted you. Go ahead. It's fine. Yuri pauses, feeling awkward after having gotten cut off. I like going into the woods or to the park, just places where you can walk or sit and not have any people around. It's peaceful. It's just nice to kind of remove myself from everything that matters and let my racing mind operate autonomously for a while. When do you like to do that? It just depends on my mood. After school, on the weekends, whenever I feel like I need it. Wow. I never feel, I feel like I would never have the time to do something like that. I find that we have a lot more time than we think we do if you don't let it slip through your fingers. The three continued their conversation, led primarily by Sayori but with Monica chiming every now and then as well. Monica had intended to leave it to Sayori and focus on her own work, but she found it difficult to not join in. Before they knew it, the end of the day was upon them once more. Oh, it looks like we should be wrapping up for today. So, are you, are you two going to be starting on that book next club meeting? That's the plan. I'm so excited. Sayori beams. Yuri collects her things. Once packed, Yuri wordlessly waves to Sayori and Monica with a gentle smile. Bye! As Yuri exits, Sayori enthusiastically returns her farewell. Once again, Sayori and Monica are left in the club room. Sayori... You're a lifesaver. <laughs> I didn't do anything, I just talked. Still. Besides, it really lifts my mood. It feels really nice when I can put when I can put my energy toward other people like that. She was really excited to be included, you know? It made me happy. 
well, there's no point, there's no doubt in my mind that she'll have a great time here with you engaging her. How are you feeling about starting the book with her next meeting? I'm kind of scared, but I think she'll be happy as long as I'm trying my best. I think you'll do great. After the surprise of a new club member, it seems like everyone has their spirits lifted with something new to look forward to. Alright. Yeah, that was a good start. Another school day ends. Swallowing her anxiety, Yuri makes her way to the club room, expecting to be the last one to arrive. As she opens the door, she's surprised to find only Sayori in the club room. It's club time again. Monica went to the computer lab, so it's just us today. Is that okay? Yuri nods, silently nods, unable to make eye contact. Um, I'm sorry about yesterday. Hmm? Sayori tilts her head, unsure of what of exactly what Yuri is talking about. Well, I mean, the way I got overly excited to share my books and how you had to stop me so we could talk first. It was so in inconsiderate of me. I got too excited and forgot to think about everyone else in the club, so... <laughs> Yuri, you didn't do anything wrong. I thought it was cute how excited you are. You were. Uh, well, still. I think I changed my mind about the book. We don't have to read it. Huh? Why? Because... I know that you were just humoring me anyway. In retrospect, it's rather obvious that nobody was truly interested. But... If you like it so much, then it must be worth sharing. I've already decided to j I'll join the club, so you don't have to try so hard to entice me. That's not what I was doing. A moment of uncomfortable silence stretches between the two of them. Um, well the thing is, we don't have a club, any club activities yet. I mean, Monica and I have just been working on recruitment stuff, mostly. So it just sounded like something fun that we could do together, reading your books. You know, like, I say club activity. That would be okay, right? Uh, why am I being so resistant to this anyway? It's exactly what I wanted in the first place, and you're being so nice about it. I really don't know what's wrong with me. I'm sorry for being like this. You don't have to apologize. Just tell me if there's anything I can do to help you feel more comfortable here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sayori so pulls her desk against Yuri's and sits next to her. The book in question is already on Yuri's desk. Peering over, Sayori reads the cover of the book. Dusk Bell. Uh, part 1 of the Everlast Saga. <laughs> it's Dusk Bell by Annabelle. Uh, sorry, I'm ready now. Alright, I should probably get some paper. Yuri grabs a spiral notebook of hers and tears a few sheets of paper. Wait, how come you need paper? Oh. It's useful to draw things out sometimes, like maps, timelines, family trees, or for just taking notes. Dang, like, what is this book? It sounds like some, like, like I've never read the, you know, uh, the World of Ice and Fire books, you know, the, the Game of Thrones books. But like, I watched the show and they do so much with the world building and a lot of like different families. Like, this is like <laughs> making me think of that. Like, what? what is this? Even timelines, like... Jeez. This, this book sounds... It, it actually sounds very interesting. But yeah. <laughs> Notes? Ah, I mean... Hmm, yes. That's an effective strategy. Exactly. I'm sure it will be especially helpful for someone new to the genre. Uh -huh. So Yuri's joke flew completely over Yuri's head. But thinking about it... She decides that it's probably for the best that she did that it did. Well, I'm not used to having company look through this, but I'll try to help make it as accessible as possible. I trust you. You're like super smart. Oh please. Yuri tries to dismiss the compliments, but she can't hide her smile and light blush. You can't generalize intelligence. I'm only smart in things I have a lot of experience with. Contrarily, I'm awful at anything involving real people. That should be evident enough from the two days I've spent here so far. So in my eyes, it's everyone else who comes off as smart. Especially you. No! Sayori rubs her shoulder against Yuri's. You're such a sweetheart when you're not being shy. Uh, anyway, would you like to get started? <laughs> okay. After the minor diversion between them, the two get back on track with their planned club activity. 
It really begins to guide Sayori through the basics of the fantasy world her story takes place in. The more of it she details, the races, factions, history, elements of magic, the more questions Sayori seems to have. I'm actually really interested in this book. I don't know if it's real. What is it? Dust Bill by Annabelle? Is that even real? Let me look it up. I mean, because like it, it does sound interesting, just like how many different things it kind of encompasses. Um, let's see, Dusk Bell? Um, Annabelle? Is that even a real book? There we go. Um... <laughs> oh my gosh, dude, I just scared myself. <laughs> I got the, the Annabelle doll. Okay, I'm not looking up, up right now, man. I'm not here to scare myself. Like, you know, put that image to my mind. It's like the middle of the night. I want to be able to be, be, be able to sleep, and now I'm stuttering because of that. <laughs> um. Anyways, um. But despite Yuri's expectations, Yuri eloquently guides her through it. It's in a way that is such that is such. It's <laughs> oh my gosh, in a way such that it's fun to follow along. No, yeah, I still got like Annabelle in my mind, the freaking doll. It becomes evident that the world building aspect of the story, not just the story itself, is the one that Yuri finds her passion leaning towards. I'm actually the same way too. Like dude, like Fallout is my favorite when it comes to world building. I think just, I would say especially when it has so many different, I guess, themes or like, you know, different like, I guess, factions in a way, like themes and worlds or maybe, maybe not worlds. <laughs> It's just one world. But I like how they have these different themes to it. Like when it comes to the factions, like you got the knights with the Brotherhood of Steel. You got the ones that look like like uh, devils with the Enclave. And then you got others that are like also, you know, you know, stuff like that where it's not like your usual standard military or like um, scavenger in a wasteland. They even have like super mutants. They got these ghouls, which are like, you know, zombies in a way, but they're more unique. So yeah, like Fallout, I would say is my favorite. I also like the Elder Scrolls a lot too. And I also like Game of Thrones a lot, like the World of Ice and Fire. I would love to start reading, reading the books one day because the world building in the show, especially with the opening with Game of Thrones, like well, how they always show the map. And then I get to learn like the map and the places too. Like, it's very amazing. Anyways, let me continue here. <laughs> How do people come up with this stuff? It's like the exact opposite of the kind of thing, I, uh, kind of writing I do. What kind of writing? Oh, like poetry and stuff, stuff like that. The things I write are just putting down the feelings that come into my head, you know. But this is like, there must be so much planning and hard work. Ah, you're into poetry. I think there's an, an appendix that that includes some of the kingdom's written works, like poetry and folk songs. No way. <laughs> Yuri giggles, filling Sayori's heart with happiness when she realizes it's the first time she's heard Yuri laugh. It means Yuri must be having fun. Anyway, I think we can get started reading now, if you're ready. Okay, but I can't read very fast. Oh, that's fine. I'm very patient. Patience is something I pride myself in. Hmm, I see. Oh yeah, me too. I also kind of pride myself in patience. Um, you know, there are moments where, I, where I'm not that patient, but I feel like most of the time... Like, you know, if, if I'm like maybe teaching someone, I'm usually patient with them. But yeah, I will like maybe even try some different angles of like making making them understand. Like the way I kind of think about it is like, you know, you either get it or don't get it. And if it, if you don't get it, I'll try maybe going at a, at another angle, as much as possible maybe. Hmm, I see. Siri jots Yuri is patient to her notes. Hey, that's for the book. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but I'm kind of glad you're patient because I need that sometimes a lot of times Siri flips through the first few pages of the book getting past the table of contents. Okay, chapter one The room becomes silent as the two of them begin to read But the silence only lasts for a few moments before Siri speaks up again What does vindicated mean? Uh, well in this context it essentially means that he was proven innocent it's okay to ask if you ask questions, right? Of course. 
Sia returns the page. Are these footnotes? Mm hmm. A lot of the dialogue has cultural references that require explanation to be understood. Hmm. The two continue reading. Yuri's relaxed expression remains unchanged. Meanwhile, Sayori's expression grows tense as she tries to make her way through the tense texts. I'm not gonna lie, dude. I feel like I feel like I want to read, you know, George R. R. Martin's books now with the Ice and Fire stuff after going through the side stories here. Cause yeah, I was never really into reading that much. But after going through this, like it like at the very least, I'm, I want to read it for the for the world building, you know. Since you know, I already watched the show, I can just easily imagine the characters in my mind and the places too, like King's Landing and Winterfell. So, yeah, I feel like I want to <laughs> give the books a shot, you know. Maybe even uh, do some writing on my own. Um. Yeah. Meanwhile, Sierra's expression grows tense as she tries to make her way through the dense texts. Up until now. Their expressions have been reversed, with Sayori easily navigating social situations and Yuri struggling in them. But the tables have turned. Wait, are they talking about the past right now, or the present? Where? Right here. They're talking about the past. These paragraphs are describing a flashback that Barnes is having. But they didn't tell me that. It's implied from the context. Ooh, you know what it's reminding me of? I know we keep on pausing. Like, it, like, in a way, I guess, you know, it's not from the context, I guess, like, way, but... They, I don't know if I should say this because it kind of spoils it, but there's this one show where... They also shows, they also show, like, the past along with the present, but they don't tell you until, like, the very end. I'm not gonna say which show it is, but... But, like, it's such a, like, a big... Like, I guess, reveal at the end. Like, it's so good when they revealed it. It reminds me of that. Siori rubs her temples. The two of them continue, with Siori asking fewer questions. She begins to understand the value in the notes, as she finds herself referring to them somewhat often, and even adding to them. But her reduction in questions comes not from her getting used to the reading, but rather from her fearing that she'll come across as stupid. Oh. I can feel that sometimes. Um, at last, Siori reaches th at the, the end of the chapter. Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it more, I don't really feel that that much. Maybe sometimes. But like, the thing is, I I look back at school and I always ask questions. I'm like, maybe one of the few people that... I guess when it comes to like, maybe a class that I'm into. If it's if it's a class that I'm, that I'm not really into, I just maybe don't ask questions. But if it's something that I like a lot in a subject, I always ask questions. Um... At last, Siri reaches the end of the chapter. I think we can stop here for now. And also, like the teachers, they also appreciate that too. Appreciate that too because I guess it shows that I'm willing to learn and you know get things right to make sure I'm doing things right. Okay. Siri takes a deep breath and closes what little of the book she's gotten through so far. So, what are your thoughts up to this point? Um. Siri tries to find words. Am I doing well so far? Hmm. I'm not sure I understand. Well, I don't know. When it takes me so long to read and understand things, it makes me feel really dumb. <laughs> but I really like how you get into it. It makes me want to get, make me want to keep going and to keep doing my best, so I can see it in the way you do, that you do. Ah. Uh, the relaxation in Yuri's expression fades. I see. Yuri quietly gathers her things. We can continue tomorrow, right? Yuri pauses, then shakes her head. We can do something else tomorrow, but I'm sorry. Wait, sorry for what? I don't understand. I'm sorry. I don't want to do this anymore, that's all. Ooh. What's going on here? What the heck? Hmm. I don't know if it's because maybe is it like one of those things where because she's feeling dumb that she doesn't want to come off as like someone that who's like like way better than them you think like i guess condescending maybe would be a thing would be the best word for it i don't know if it's the best word though <laughs> i don't know 
I'm sorry that I made you. Uh, he relieves. You weren't making me. Ceres left alone with her words. Or maybe because she felt kind of like, I guess, bad that maybe she's been going off too strong, maybe? With like just sharing her passion too much? Ceres left alone with her words. How did this happen? We were just having fun a second ago. It's my fault. I said something stupid and hurt her. I should have just told her that I enjoyed it. Monica trust me, trusted me with this. It's the only thing I'm, I'm good at, and I still messed it up. What if she doesn't want to come back? John in guilt, Ciri stares blankly at her desk, spread with notes. The but the but <laughs> the book uh, sits next to them. Right. If she wasn't coming back, then she wouldn't have left the book here, right? Unless she just forgot to take it with her? Uh, this is horrible. Was it really because she thought I wasn't enjoying our time together? Or maybe she wasn't enjoying our time together because I'm not good enough? I probably let her down so much by having trouble following along. Yeah, I'm sure if I was smarter, then she would be having so much more fun. I need to do better for her. Ooh. Are we ending off with that? Yes, we are. Alright, let's keep on going, man. Um, Part 2 of Understanding. I guess trying to understand... Uh, yeah, Yuri here. Because, yeah, like, right now we're not really sure what's going on with her. We're kind of, like, guessing. What do, what do you think trust means? Like, I, I know what it means, but, like, in this context with the story, like, what is the... I guess trusting with, like, our secrets in a way? Because we kind of, like, shared some, some secrets at the end. But yeah, understanding. Let's go. I'm sure we're just not understanding Yuri. And, like, why she's sad and stuff. For the first time, Sayuri is the first to enter the club room. Anxiety courses through her relentlessly. Will Yuri show up, show up today? Sitting at the desk, she stamps her feet in an attempt to calm down. Why am I letting this affect me so much? I'm doing everything I can to make Yuri happy, but my best wasn't good enough. But it was still my best. But I'm letting everyone down. I'm always just a disappointment. Oh boy, this this might go into her like depression and stuff. That's not good. Siri continues to wrestle with her self-deprecating thoughts. Every tiny uh, noise causes her to lift her head in anticipation of Yuri's arrival. Minutes pass and nobody enters the club room. Not Yuri or Monica. Yeah, why is Monica not entering? It's a new day. Oh, there she is. Gosh, I'm so late. Why did I offer to help those other students with their work? I'm such a pushover sometimes. It's going to leave such a bad impression on new club members if, like Yuri if I'm not the first one there. Monica rounds the corner, approaching the club room. As she does so, Yuri? Ah. Yuri jumps at the sound of Monica's voice. She's sitting outside of the club room, against the wall next to the door. Embarrassed, she quickly closes the book she was reading and stands up. Oh gosh, I'm sorry I'm so late. You didn't have to wait outside for me. The door to the club room is open. It's not. Yuri stammers, unable to explain herself. She peers inside the club room through the window, then looks away. Actually, I was just... I was wondering if I could help you today instead. Huh? Me? With club publicity and stuff? Yes. Monica is utterly confused. Why is Yuri asking this all of a sudden when she was so eager to spend time with Sayuri before? Did they not get along after all? Monica looks into the club room herself and see to see Sayuri sitting alone inside. Okay. It's kind of a simple job, but I'd be happy for you to tag along. Me too. Monica is worried, but she finds it difficult to insert herself into whatever conflict that may have arisen. It's a little ironic, she realizes, that she could be so conflict avoidance after having been in the debate club. Okay, let's take a walk together. I just have to make a copies of this new flyer, then go around to the billboards and replace the old ones with the new ones. Yuri nods, and the two set off. The two walk in silence. Without Sayori, Monica finds it quite difficult to strike up conversation. So, how's everything go been going? Fine. That's good. Neither of them follow up with anything more. Monica tenses up at, at the stinted conversation. How the heck does Siri, Siri do it? 
<laughs> Sorry, I didn't see you yesterday. I went straight to the computer lab to work on the flyers. Mm-hmm. Sayori told me. What did you end up doing yesterday? Just some reading. Oh, I'm glad. It's really starting to feel more like a literature club now. Yeah. It's kind of funny. I felt so intimidated at first when I heard about the kind of reading you were into. But you know, it's kind of stupid of me because I was, I'm just intimidated by things I'm not good at. And it's silly to assume that everyone who comes to the club will just have the same interests as me. But it's so cool that you were able to get Sayori into it. It's like the club is working. I'm really happy about that. She's not into it. Huh? She's not into it. And I'm stupid for forcing her, it onto her. Yuri falls silent again, as if she started her thought but can't figure out how to continue it. Did something happen? Yuri sighs. No, it's just me. I just... Yuri pauses. Hmm? I'm thinking. A moment passes in silence, then Yuri shakes her head. I shouldn't be complaining to you all of a sudden. Don't be silly. I won't think you're complaining. I just want to make sure you feel welcome. If it's important to that, then you can tell me anything. Well, I do feel welcome. Too welcome, I guess. It's not an issue with the club, it's just an issue with me. So I feel wrong to in inconvenience you with it. Ah. Monokyo pauses and thinks. Well, what if he put it this way? It's my job as president to understand the needs of the club members, right? We're going to have all kinds of people joining this club, hopefully, anyway. And learning about the diverse needs and interests of everyone will help me come up with club activities that everyone can be happy with. That everyone can be happy with? Not just only some people? Of course. I need to be looking out for everyone, otherwise, what kind of club w would it be? I see. Yuri looks a little more relaxed. It signals to Monica that switching from a sympathetic approach to a pragmatic one was a good choice. Each individual truly does have their own needs. Okay. Yuri takes a deep breath. <sighs> I'm a really weird and awkward person. I've accepted of that about myself. I just don't know how to, I guess, connect with other people. How is it so easy for everyone else? How do you just make conversation about any arbitrary topic. I, I can talk for hours about the things I'm into, unfortunately, so much that I don't know when to stop. But for anything else, I just have no idea what to say. You know, I'm just like that too. I gotta say, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of myself in Yuri in a way. Because <laughs> like, yeah, for me, like I know when it comes to YouTube and stuff, maybe I don't look like it, but in real life, I'm not the best at like, you know, communication and stuff. I guess you can say my personality in real life is is more like Yuri. But yeah, like when I try to talk about my interests, like I know what to say and stuff, but I don't know what to do, I guess that much when it comes to stuff that I'm not really into. Like I do try my best to, you know, make it a good conversation though. So I understand that about myself. I'm just not good with people. I can't help it. So it feels like whenever I'm, I, I'm confronted with a new social situation, I'm either ignored or made a fun of or take, taken pity on. And Siri falls into that third category. I guess if we're doing more comparisons with me, I don't know if I really feel that way. But yeah. <laughs> uh, she... What? Hold on. You're saying that Siri is taking pity on you? Yuri nods. I just want to be treated like a normal person. If you don't like me or don't connect with my interests, then just tell me. I can accept that and move on. Sayori is too nice to me. I'm so stupid for not realizing that she would just go along with whatever I push onto her. Nobody deserves to put themselves through that kind of discomfort just because, because they pity some weirdo who doesn't know how to make friends. It's the worst feeling. I hate it. Yuri's sharp words cut through the, through the tense air. Somewhere in the middle of the conversation, the two stop short in the hallway, prioritizing the conversation over their original task. Monica looks at Yuri. Yuri only looks down, with her fi fist uh, clenched. I think... I think you should tell her that. I could never say that to someone's face. It's pathetic. 
Sayori is different. Making people happy is the most important thing to her. I'm sure that's all she's trying to do. So, if you're able to explain to her what makes you happy, then she'll do anything to make it happen. That's the problem. What kind of friendship has one person always trying to cater to the other person's weird needs? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm making myself sound so... No, I think I'm starting to understand. Monica hesitates to finish her thought out loud. Uh, it's something that Sayori would be able to say better. Uh, Sayori is someone who will give anyone however, however much kindness they need in order to smile. Uh, but Yuri, who has difficulty accepting kindness, must be driving Sayori to be more assertive in her kindness, further exacerbating the matter. Neither person is to blame, but it's an issue that can't be resolved without them understanding each other better. Sayori wants to be your friend, I promise that. It's okay to be, for people to be for different people to have different needs. I mean, Sayori, she has her own needs too. But good friends work together and can be what they need for each other. You just have to be, be a good, have to be good at, uh, you just have to have good communication and talk about it. I don't have good communication. Yuri stops and shakes her head. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. My head is just it's so resistant to everything. I'm I'm pushing such a kind person away from me because of it. Yuri pauses to think. I'm so tired of the cycle I'm creating for myself. I think I'm so afraid of people pushing me away, just that I just pushing me pushing me away that I just push them away first. How thoughtless and immature immature of me. Yuri takes a deep breath and exhales. I didn't mean for this to turn into a whole venting session, but I understand now that I just need to communicate with her. <laughs> You're totally fine. It's for the club, remember? You're just helping make the club better, a better place for everyone. Yeah. Yuri falls silent again. She looks like she wants to say something. This, this is kind of critical thinking. This kind of critical thinking is something that I'm really bad at. You know, about people. So, thank you. Anytime. Monica smiles at Yuri. For just a moment, Yuri finds it in herself to meet Monica's gaze, returning a shy smile of her own. Yeah, I would say that, you know, afterwards when I made those comparisons, maybe that's when I kind of like... When I don't relate to Yuri. Like for me, like <laughs> I guess if if like maybe uh if they're not interested, I would like maybe just change the change the subject or something. You know, maybe to something better. Um Like I'm I guess I guess I'm not, I don't really uh, keep myself at at that at that mood, I guess. If Or I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, Yuri I feel like is doing a Makes it like a very big deal if like the other person is not interested. <laughs> For me, I just move on to the next sub like subject. Anyways, Yuri and Monica finish replacing the old flyers with the new ones. More accurately, Monica mostly did the work while Yuri followed along. But as the club room once again draws near, so does Yuri's confrontation. I can't do this. Yes, you can. It'll be great. Ding. Like, so Yuri has been waiting in that club room for a while, I feel. Yuri sighs and shakes her head. I'm never going to feel confident en enough. I just have to do it. If I don't do it now, I never will. Yuri starts towards the door, but then turns to face Monica. You're not just going to wait outside, are you? <laughs> I can take a walk. Want me to get you a coffee or something? Actually, I prefer tea. Oh yeah, that's right. She does like tea. She made tea before. I like to make my own though, so please don't worry about it. Although, I suppose that's one downside of reading here in the club, rather than at home. I don't get to drink tea while reading. Sorry, I guess that has nothing to do with this. Hmm. You know, now that you mention it, I guess we could get permission to keep stuff for tea in a club room. You can use it like... You can use like an electric kettle to heat up water, right? Would that really be possible? I'll look into it. I think it would be great. Yuri smiles and nods at the thought. Well, I'll be back in a bit. Good luck. Monica waves at Yuri, then turns around and departs down the hallway as Yuri's smile fades once more. A moment of daydreaming about tea isn't enough to save her from the anxiety of the task that lies before her, but it must be done. Uh, taking one more deep breath, Yuri timidly opens the club room door. Yuri? W wait, hold on, I'm not done yet. 
Siri shuffles a bunch of papers around. Oh, was she re reading the book and taking notes too? Just to, uh, you know, make an effort to be interested to the book some more? Uh, um. Siri stammers. Her words suddenly cut her throat. At that moment, she realizes how Siri has been spending her afternoon. I wasn't expecting you to come today. I was really hoping to make it all the way through the next chapter first, but I got most of the way through it. And look! Siri holds up a sheet of paper. It's a page of notes, beautifully produced with ind indentations, categories, and even color coding. As Yuri sees it, her expression shifts from anxiety to despair. Really? From anxiety to despair? I was afraid that you were getting disappointed in me, so I've been trying really hard. Stop. Yuri presses her fist against her forehead. Please stop. I can't take this. Yuri? Siri's voice quivers in shock after received, having received the exact, exact opposite response she was expecting. So yeah, Siri is... Like, you know, she feels like it's her fault for, like, you know, being dumb. But for Yuri, she feels like it's her fault for, like, not... For, like, you know, making her... For, for, for I guess, feeling... Making her feel like she's forcing her to be into it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Siori looks away in guilt. Did I do something wrong? I don't understand. So if I did something wrong, please tell me. Yuri shakes her head. No, it's me. I keep putting myself in these situations where people are afraid to treat me normally. If you don't like this kind of reading, it's okay. Please just tell me. I don't need to be treated differently just because I'm weird. Or yeah, I guess that too, like... I remember I remember before she wants to be treated like a normal normal person. But I don't treat you differently. I just want my friends to be happy. So I thought that if we did something together that you really like, I don't want your pity. What did I do that? Yuri sinks to her knees, her voice squeaks. I'm sorry. Tears of guilt and self loathing begin to stream down her face. This isn't how it's supposed to go. Why is it so hard to articulate your thoughts? Why do you end up pushing everyone away from you? Yuri's mind pounds with internal accus accusations as she shuts her eyes, unable to face Yuri or the rest of the world. She should leave, just escape from here, before Monica sees her like this, and before Yuri tells Monica what she did. But before Yuri can put any strength into her legs, she feels a warm pair of arms gently wrap around her, wrapped around her from behind. Oh, it's okay. Siori whispers in a soothing voice, "It's okay, it's okay." Overcome by despair, Yuri finds herself unable to protest or pull away from Siori's kind gesture. Yuri sniffles, breathing heavily through a clenched throat, trying with all her willpower to control herself. I understand. I understand that that the things you're feeling in, in your head are different from the things you're trying to say. I know that must be what you're feeling right now. I promise. I understand that. So I'll give you as much time as you need. When you're ready, just tell me your feelings, and we'll talk about them together, okay? Yuri sniffles again and nods her head. She gives herself a minute to compose her thoughts, then speaks while steadying her voice. I think... I think that I've gotten so used to people being weirded out by me that it feels like anyone who's nice to me is just doing it out of pity. I'm so horrible with people. So it makes me not want to believe that someone can actually like me for who I am. Yuri pauses, but Sayori doesn't interrupt. Rather, she waits for Yuri to continue. Okay, so she feels like, yeah, like I guess, like she said, she just she just wants to be treated like normal, you know. Uh, I got so excited when I joined the literature club. I thought that it was finally my chance to make friends through my interests, because my interests are the only things that I know how to talk about. It's all I have going for me. But then, whenever I catch myself getting overly obsessive in front of other people. It feels like I'm making a fool of, of myself. I hate myself for it. <laughs> I guess another comparison I can make is that, you know, I do feel like 
you know, if I talk about my interests, I do feel like I can be, I can look very obsessive with it. Like, I don't mind if I look like a fool now. <laughs> For me. Like, I'm sure, like, not everyone's gonna get, like, I guess, my interest. Ultimately, I just want to be treated like a normal person. But how am I supposed to, to expect that when I can't behave like one? I just want to learn how to get along with people and stop ruining things for myself. That's all. Yuri finishes her thoughts, feeling more steady after having gotten them out. Sayori, who can feel Yuri's breath rise and fall from beneath her arms, realizes that as well. Thank you for helping me understand you a little better. You know, you were so great at helping me while we were reading. So I'll help you with the things... Oh wait, that's Yuri. <laughs> I was using Yuri's voice. Um, yeah, thank you for helping me understand you a little better. You know, you were so great at helping me while we were reading. So I'll help you with the things that, that you need too. Dang, I gotta say, Sayori is such a good friend. Like, she's definitely the... One of the better friends. Like, she knows how to... How to I guess handle these situations, I feel. And she's really good at it. But... I feel like it would just be frustrating for you with how much patience I require sometimes. <laughs> that sounds kind of familiar. I couldn't stop worrying about that while we were reading. I was so afraid that you would get frustrated with me. But I would never do that. I did my best to reassure you by mentioning how I have a lot of patience. Yeah, I know. But my irra irrational fears just won't be quiet sometimes. I'm sure it's the same for you, right? Yeah. Irrational fears. Well, you know. There's no way that you could, you could frustrate me. Because I already like you as the person that you are. I know that you said that you have a hard time believing that. But I promise that is true. Uh, you don't have to be a social person for people to like you. I think you're really considerate in your own way, you know? Worrying so much about people's feelings. We're all kind of weird. It's a literature club. It is a literature club. <laughs> but it's, but the, it's the best part that we're all different and have different interests. Like, about the book. I'm reading it because I want to, I promise. That's what I really want. It's a bit of a struggle, but try not to, not to mistake that for me not enjoying it. I mean, we could never discover new things if we didn't try them first, right? I want to learn the reasons that you love it so much. And in the end, if it's not for me, then I can say that. But I'll be glad that I tried it and learn more about you. Plus, you're like super duper smart. And I want that to rub off on me. <laughs> Yuri fights back at a smile at that comment. Um, I already... The heavy atmosphere surrounding her seems to have evaporated through the caress of Sayori's arms. Your hair is so pretty. I always wanted long hair, but I was awful at taking care of it, so I cut it all off. Mm. Yuri's tension relaxes. For once, she feels okay just listening, rather than worrying so much about saying the right thing. Sayori, sensing Yuri's comfort, lets her rest. It must be so difficult for her to feel relaxed around other people. But if the literature club can make it happen, then it's something that she deserves to experience. Well then, based on my understanding of your feelings, I suppose I wouldn't mind if we were to continue reading. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. But we can stop at any time. If you truly don't like it, please be honest about it. I won't be offended. Of course. I'm not going to judge anything this early on though, so we'll just have- we'll just see what happens. Oh, and, um, it's not good to touch people without their consent first. Oh no, I'm sorry. I didn't make you uncomfortable. I mean to make you uncomfortable. Oh, you didn't. I mean, I suppose it was kind of nice. I was just saying. Oh my gosh, Monica. <laughs> the real jump scare. I'm back. Monica's back. I haven't seen you, like, at all recently. Sayori trots over to Monica. Ah, she whispers loudly. Can I hug you? <laughs> sure, Sayori. 
So Yuri wraps her arms around Monica. Oh yeah, Yuri, it might be good to know. So Yuri can be kind of a hug monster. Ah. Hey, don't call me a monster. Artemis is a monster. If he inherits the kingdom, it could spell disaster. Oh, was that a reference from the book? Like, I'm, I'm guessing she's not ref referring to, like, the mythology of Artemis. <laughs> Yuri laughs. Monica perplexedly looks between the two of them, then smiles. Well, I'm glad you've been enjoying your reading so far. It's like our first real activity as a literature club. Uh, about that, well, you've been so patient with exploring my interests. I think that it would be inconsiderate of me to not return the favor to you and learn about the things that you like. Yes. Do you like poetry? I feel like that's the thing that everyone can, <laughs> can like. <laughs> Yuri smiles. Oh, there we go. No, like, tease for, I guess, Natsuki. Like, what is next? Is it, is it really Natsuki? Yes. Respect. Oh, my. So, yeah, we got some new mail. So, what is this about? Character dis discrepancy. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lib Musi. Having run the control simulation for a while, it's, it's evident that a certain character is missing from any mention or appearance. A certain character is missing from any mention or appearance. This makes me speculate that Monica's meddling is less clumsy than we think, because she would have to manufacture this character herself as a way to of forcing interaction between her and the user. Could that be why the character has such limited and dissonant personality traits? Or am I reading too much into this? Is it... I'm guessing she's talking about the MC. A certain character is missing from any mention or appearance. I mean, the thing is, I, I think Sayori mentioned the main character, right? Like, she kind of referenced the, like, you know, I'm going to join the anime club and stuff. I remember that from the previous video. But, like, you know, that was, like, one thing. Like, I don't know if this means that Monica made the main character... But, you know, it was also kind of referenced. Like, I don't, I don't know if this was, like, before, like, they made the side stories. Like, you know, in, in the game universe. Like, I'm talking about in the game universe or after. Because I don't know if, like, with Sayori seeing that line, that means Monica already, like, meddled and made that MC. Yeah, could that be why the character has such limited dissonance? I'll open the issue to start tracking info, observations on the anomaly of this character appearing. So, like... I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm not, I'm not really understanding like this first sentence and then the next one. Cause like, if they're missing, but then they said that Monica, she's forcing a way to, of an interaction between, between the, between her and the character or like the user, I mean. Huh, that's like something that I'm not really understanding too much. But anyway, guys, yeah, I think I'll go ahead here. That's been like the hour here. Gonna end off with some happy music after seeing Annabelle again. Like, I don't mind seeing like the, the one from the movie, but I think I saw like the real doll and that one like creeps me out of, <laughs> of Annabelle. Uh, there we go. Happy song. Anyway, guys, uh, but yeah, that'll be for now. Uh, next time, yeah, that, that was pretty much understanding part one and two. Uh, next time we'll be doing respect, which... I guess that's where we go and meet Natsuki, which I'm excited for. That means everyone will be here. And look, there'll be some Natsuki and Yuri stuff going on, which I'm looking forward to because I know in the main game, they've been like, you know, at it. Like, they have not been agreeing that much, I feel. Anyway, guys, yeah. Uh, that'll be it for now. That's game. But if I lay down and I play dead